Yeah, it's clobbering time. Welcome to the Hardly Heroes Podcast. Hey yo, from the halls of justice to the temple of doom, the space wizards return in earnest sonic the boom. Pulling swords from stones, throwing rings into volcanoes, water full of witches, I'm inevitably Thanos. Voltron made of lions, Wakanda with a panther. Walk on Mars, darker Manhattan, spocking for an answer. Live long and prosper, the force will be with you always. No work in all plays, shining like blood film always. Come and play with us, we all float down here. Say your name three times and we hopefully appear. Team full of psychics, super soldiers and weirdos. Some people call us sidekicks because we hardly heroes. Welcome to Hardly Heroes, a podcast dedicated to movies, TV, and everything geek related. I'm your host, buddy. And I'm She's uh, Babs, and we have a special, <laughs> special guest. Uh, super excited you made the drive. Um, won't you? Uh, no, actually, I will announce him because I am super excited. Um, it is Chris Velasquez, the best director I've ever known. Oh, thank you. I Woo! appreciate that very much. Thank you. So, thank you for joining us. So, uh, welcome to episode 250. Four. That's a Jeez, lot. That's a lot. I know, dude. We're that's in the two fitties. You guys, like, two fitties. Like we're in the two fitties, not yeah. like touching two fitties. No, we're like <laughs> in the middle of it. Like we could soon be out of the two fifties and into the two sixties. Oh, Jesus. And you know, we moved it back so we could have Chris here. And right, we're recording on a Friday, which is unusual for us. Very. Um, I, I, honest I to God, <laughs> Babs is probably going to make an appearance. I think she's already drunk. And it's a Friday night. Things are getting crazy. It's going to be a hectic night. So I, I apologize. <laughs> no, don't worry about it. <laughs> um, if you're new to Hardly Heroes, go to HardlyHeroes.com. You can find all about us. Or you can go to Hardly Heroes uh, Facebook page, the Sanctorum. And that's where we keep the show going. So yo, yo. thanks for um, making the drive. Um for anybody that doesn't know who Chris is, Chris has been making shorts, been making movies. He is most well known in the Hardly Heroes community <laughs> as making the coolest thing of all time for us. We actually made a promo video for Avengers Endgame. Yeah. And he whipped us into shape. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. I mean, I know it's it's very hard, but he made me look out of shape, which... I mean, it was a hard. Uh, it, it was. It it's was a not lot, that hard. It was a lot of Photoshop. Had to make sure I had everything edited right. It, you know, <laughs> the best part, and I'm so glad you're here, was we had got kicked out of downtown. Yeah. Because they didn't want us to shoot, so we went on the bridge, and it's what four in the morning. It's freezing cold. It was me, Goat, and Dilly up at the top, and HTC. It was so freaking cold where I'm trying to get everybody pumped up. Right. And I'm like, all right, guys, come on. We can do this. And we're like jumping and we're like hollering. And Groot calls. Uh, Logan's like, uh, shut up. You're going to get us kicked out of here. And Chris is like half asleep, like trying to get the <laughs> shot. We're like freezing. <laughs> it was just oh, it was the most fun. Oh, yeah, no, it was a lot of fun. I, I had a lot of fun working with that. And I just working with you guys it was like a you know a breath of fresh air because like you know like i'm always used to working with like you know strict time restraints right. and actors and stuff like that and it's like whenever i get to work with friends right it's like a completely different ballpark. it's like more fun <laughs> yeah it's 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 fun and then when you guys have like a you know like a, a common goal like okay we have an idea we just don't know how we're gonna get there okay let's have fun figuring this out right, you know right. what I mean? we got one day to do it but let's figure this out <laughs> i know right you're like we have to figure out in five minutes let's go you know yeah. and my agent was actually you know on set the whole day <laughs> so that obviously he made sure my lighting was right made sure you know i had a chair to sit in who's yeah. your agent uh, the biggest <sighs> critique of my life and my work my father <laughs> 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 yeah my, my dad and my brother uh they came down to help out and yeah. stuff and my dad and buddy hit it off man oh he, my gosh. He's, yeah i <laughs> love him i like absolutely love him <laughs> the nicest man ever he was just like oh no no no! don't let chris talk to you like that <laughs> he's like you don't talk to my client that way <laughs> and he was like i don't like his lighting we need more lighting yeah and he like laid this light on my lap on the shot where we're in the comic book shop oh, yeah. right in oblivion yeah he's like i don't like this r.i.p 
Missable. <laughs> they they closed down because of COVID. Oh, oh, they did. I was really sad. Like, oh man, that, that hurt when I saw that. And we, you know, everybody tried their best to kind of support yeah. them, but. We're still in contact though with Neil. Yeah. Oh yeah. The owner. Uh-huh. Um, he actually hangs out on the street on Del Paso Boulevard, so we see him actually a lot. Um, we love you, Neil. <laughs> oh man, that's crazy. I know it sucked because it honestly, like this place, this uh-huh. salon, this building that we opened up, is absolutely one hundred percent inspired by Neil and Oblivion, where they made. A comic book shop that was really nice and cool to hang out with instead of it feeling like a dungeon or mom's basement or, mm-hmm. you know, kind of like, like a, a Starbucks or yeah. something like it felt homey in and it just felt, right. Me. And it was just a little bit more like upper class kind of comic book shop instead of those a lot of those classic dungeon yeah. dingy comic book shops. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, yeah. We were there. I, I love that shop. It I know. Like, it was so beautiful. Yeah. And we really modeled this place after that where we were like, we want a nerdy space that's a little more upscale. Yeah. Just like Oblivion. So yeah. we love you. Because it didn't feel like a, a coffee shop or a comic book shop. Yeah, it, it just felt weird, like, like a like cool hybrid. space. Yeah. yeah. What's yeah. actually funny is I actually bought something there when we were there filming. I bought a book of, uh, of Breath of the Wild, a Zelda. Oh, and yeah. So it was like a game kind of outlined how to play the game. I barely got the game for the Nintendo Switch a month ago. <laughs> so it was always just sitting there and I right, got it like, for my I wife. I will need it. Yeah, I got it for my wife because she loves Zelda, but we had never got the game and we never had it. We barely got a Switch for Christmas and then we were like, okay, let's buy it. And I bought her the game as a Christmas gift. And so now we have it, but we haven't played it yet. So oh my God, <laughs> eventually when we play it, we'll have a whole book to like, right. have, you know, this is how you do it. This is all the secrets and stuff like that to be able to go through the game. So yeah, that's hilarious. Yeah. That place is awesome though. What I, I do want to know though, is that scene where we shot goat sneakers, mm-hmm. that, that, that was probably my favorite scene of the whole, the whole thing. How come? Like setting them up was super fun for me. <laughs> like it was like Christmas. Like I was right. like pulling out new sneakers and we like set them so, all I up. I can't believe how many sneakers that guy has. Dude, I he had them sitting in his car the whole time. Like, oh, I know, and he was probably like, oh yeah, looking dude. at the car, like all stressed. He out. was very upset too because he's like, bro, I don't like people knowing about my collection, like <laughs> what I have. And I was like, well, understandable after I saw all that heat. Yeah, but but technically, when you when you work on shorts and stuff like that. Nine times out of ten, some people will be like, "Oh, that's actually what the people own," and then other people will be like, "Oh, no, that's you know, it was just for the short." Oh, so it's he, just props. So he, so he could have just said, "Oh, those are just props. Those <laughs> right. are my collection." You know right. what I mean? Just kind of brush it off. Because right. I've, I've I've actually worked on a few shorts where some of the actors have provided their own stuff, and I would later on hear that they said, "Oh no, it was just a prop because they didn't uh, want people knowing yeah. that they had that in their house." Yeah, 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 and stuff like that. So that's kind of stuff that I do. Like if I have a really cool prop, mm-hmm. and someone be like, "Oh, do you have that still?" I'm like, no, we got rid of it or we right. tore it apart. I still in my office. Right. I'm not gonna say what it is on the air, but <laughs> <laughs> I know he was trying. To, <laughs> what is it? <laughs> he was trying to steal my Red Ranger helmet. He was like, "Hey, what's up with that?" Uh, Austin? Hey, Chris was. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I have one at home. I was like, "Add to my collection." Yeah. Is it like, signed? It's signed. Mine is by Brendan Meha, mm-hmm. so it's on the inside. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, and then it's no Austin saying job. That's, that's still <laughs> legit. I'm jelly. Yeah. It's still a J. We, yeah, I, no, had, I had gotten it, and then I ended up working with him on a short film that I did called Bishop. Uh-huh. Uh, and then, like, uh, we were talking about it, stuff like that. And then he, I saw his, and I was like, that's completely awesome. But I'm, I'm jealous because he has the whole Rita Repulsa oh, yeah. sign. Right, right. And, like, yeah. I got to interview her. She was super nice. So I got to uh, I gotta up my game. I got to go find Jason David Frank. Oh, yeah. dude. Get a signature Woo! there. If that's the only that. way I can blow Buddy out of the water. I know. <laughs> we were on a strong <laughs> Power Rangers kick oh, there for hard. a second. <laughs> Mike Jin, dude. Yeah. That was my first interview I had ever done. Like any panel, it was Mike Jin. And I'll never forget, I messed up his name. And he's like, oh, no, it's like Jin, like the drink. And I was just like. What did you say? Gin? Yeah. I was like, Mike Gin. He was like, no, like Jin, like the drink. And I just remember I immediately felt like two feet tall. I was right. like, <laughs> I'm so dumb. And like afterwards, I apologize. He's like, what? He was like, dude, I didn't even think anything of it. And I was like, so nervous. I just remember being like so freaking nervous about it. But. He was super cool. and I know. We're kind of like on, because of all the Rangers, like we, um, we're like friends with a few of them on, you know, Facebook. Yeah. Or Instagram, I guess. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. But we have like, we have kind of a collection of Rangers. I, I just, I've always liked it. I know. RPM was a lot of fun for me. Like watching that one. I actually mm-hmm. really liked it. Cause I always like cars and stuff. So it was a cool, like kind of mashup. Yeah. So yeah. it was yeah. fun. But, um, no, why I want to bring you on first uh-huh. 
the main reason why I'm excited to bring you on is so we can talk the Snyder Cut. Oh, God. Because Cheese is over here <laughs> hating. Or, or should I say Babs is hating. And then I also want to talk about, you know, what you got new coming out. Because yeah. I know you got some stuff. So you take your pick. Which one do you want to go first? Let's go Snyder Cut first. All right. <laughs> I know you're excited Woo! for that. So. I'm all steamy about oh, it. Oh, God. <laughs> okay, for one, I didn't even watch it. What? I did. Who? It's the Snyder Cut. Who? Can I ask you? Who has four hours in a day? Uh, I do. So watch this. <laughs> Same here. <laughs> yeah, I actually came home from work, like, and me and my wife put it on, and then we were like, oh, okay, you know, cool. The credits started rolling, and we looked at the clock. And we're like, whoa, four hours just went by. Like, it does not feel like four hours. No. They, they, for I don't know if it's for just for me. But maybe because they have the whole little part one, part two, they uh, have those little breaks. Yeah. It feels more like a mini series. Yeah. So you want to see what happens next. And that's all. That's have, definitely something you would do too. Like watch yeah. four episodes of a mini yeah. series. Well, and that's exactly I think was brilliant on his yeah. way of yeah. kind of putting it. And uh, HBO was crashing a lot because so many people were watching it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I had a hard time watching it at first. Like it wasn't loading. Yeah, and I got super mad, so I had to watch it on my iPad originally because I couldn't pull it up on my TV. I was so angry. Yeah, it came out on a Thursday. We ended up watching it on Friday because Same everything was crashing and stuff like that. Oh. And I kind of feel bad because my daughter didn't get to see it because she wanted to watch it, but she had a horrible headache that night oh. after dinner. So she's like, Dad, I'm going to lay down for a little bit. And I was like, okay. So we started the movie, f- and she fell asleep, and then she woke up after it was over. Oh. So she didn't really – she's like, I heard some stuff, but I didn't get to see it. And then – I kind of like, okay, cool, you know, because we got to watch it before she got to see it. Because was, it was rated R. I was like, uh, what are they going to show? But it's mainly just action. And, yeah, it was. I mean, no, nothing more than she doesn't see, like, in Demolition Man right, or something like that. It's right. like, <laughs> a couple F-bombs and she's good. <laughs> so I've seen some, like, videos and memes and, you know, stuff like that about it. Like, a lot of the shots being really, like, drawn out and slow. There's a uh, lot of slow-mo. There is a lot of slow-mo, but there's a lot of pretty shots. like yeah. that. Uh, but Zack Snyder's known for those kind of shots. Yeah. And there's a lot of really cool ones. But in this movie, I really liked Cyborg Yeah. a lot more. Like, I was mm-hmm. really into his character this go-around. Yeah. Where the first one, he was just kind of a throwaway. I think Barry Allen as Flash was awesome in both movies i don't yeah i I liked i liked the flash better in this movie because this movie didn't make him scared so like the original the one that the the theatrical cut they made the flash like a scared person who doesn't want to use his powers okay and they he's like i don't want to in the original theatrical cut batman's just like save one person and so he Mm. saves one person and then he keeps going or whatever and does that in this one it's more of a he doesn't want to push his power because he doesn't want to travel through time. Yes. Oh, he, like, there's there's something okay. there that he's afraid of, yeah. but it's not saving people. It's more leaning towards his movie that they're going to oh, set up. Okay, and Which so is... they did a very very good job with his character of like pushing that limit of what he can do. Mm-hmm. Like I was like I I'm uh, he's one of my favorite actors, oh, and okay. so I was like okay. They let him breathe in this one. That's actually yeah. really cool that they well because they're talking about doing Flashpoint. Paradox, yeah. which would be dope, is a phenomenal like story. animated movie yeah. and a phenomenal story. So yeah. I'm super excited about that. But like, that is true because that's I liked him in both movies because he was funny, he was lighthearted. But you're definitely right on that. I didn't really think of that in the original cut. He is. He's very like scared, he's timid. Skittish. Yeah. In this one, he's not. You know, like they kind of go into the backstory of his dad and like showing him trying to accomplish stuff. I liked all of that. Mm. Um, Aquaman, he was about the same. Yeah, Aquaman was about the same, but they. It was weird. It was like they set up some plot holes because his movie that has already come out mm-hmm. comes out after this, and with the Snyder cut, they set up some plot holes that I guess was the original direction they were going with the script. Uh prior to uh, Snyder leaving and then they retooled it and then they retooled the Aquaman script and then that's the movie we got because there's like some conversations between some characters and some chemistry yeah, between characters like, that are kind of like and even though what's her I keep getting a mind blank uh, Amber Heard's character uh-huh. Merida, oh yeah, right? yeah, yeah she has an accent a British accent yeah. in this movie and she doesn't have one in Aquaman oh yeah and so it was like okay there's some things here that mm. I know Snyder I, I even the slow-mo shots I know for a fact Snyder was like 
okay, Warner Brothers, you're going to give me full term. We're going to do this exactly the way I want it. I don't care if it messes up your stuff. Right. This no, is be- how we're going. I feel the reason why is he's like, all of this movie is on me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not pleasing anybody else. Like, the reason this got made is for the fans. Yes. Mm -hmm. And he made it like, hey, this is exactly what I want to make, and this is exactly what it's going to be. Yeah. And that uh, beginning part with uh, the Amazons, I loved that. That was That fight scene was freaking amazing. I thought it was... It was super um, compelling, but like super action packed. Like I don't know, I liked all of it. I thought that was really cool. I, th- I thought that I, my one of my favorite things in this movie though was Batman. Like I like how they fleshed out Batman a little bit, and they gave him a scene with the Joker. I'm sorry, like that was like something like okay, maybe that movie's never gonna happen, but I'm actually happy that at least they gave that. Wait, round. who plays the Joker in? Snyder it's Cut? Jared Leto. Jared Leto. Oh, okay. yeah. I didn't like it because it was a different Joker. Like, it it felt like they were trying to mimic Heath Ledger's Joker, and mm. I was like, ah, if they would have stuck with his gangster kind of look, uh-huh. I felt like he was fanfaring it. Like yeah. nobody liked that Joker, so he's like, "Oh, let's go back and let make it like that." Make it a little That's different. what bugged me. Yeah, because I'm I've, like, "Bro, stick I've saw, with it." I saw a lot of people that they they said, "Where's his tattoos?" Like he didn't yeah. have damage on his head, and so people were like, "Where's his?" Tattoos? And then they, I saw yesterday, last night, there was an interview with Jared Leto, and they asked him about it, and he's just like, "Well, this is a Joker in a future time, so there's obviously time has passed. It's also in a dream sequence, so Batman uh. could manifest Joker however he sees fit." Okay. So it could have just been his personality that you were looking at, and it wasn't his physical body form. But then again, you have the Flash standing in the background with the armor from Mm -hmm. Batman versus Superman where he shows up and warns him. So it's like, is it really a dream or is it a flash forward? And I guess like that was the whole thing of like Zack Snyder's just like, well, you aren't, you're not going to find out because we're not going to make a part two. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? Which so, sucks because it was good. I like. <laughs> yeah, it was I good. I even liked, you know, you Henry like, Cavill's like Superman. I was yeah. in like where he kind of loses it. And you're like, yes. Like yes. that part where Flash kind of like, like, I know it was in the beginning part too. Uh-huh. But I, I still love that scene where he's just kind of watching him his with eyes his move. eye. And he's <laughs> he like. Follows him. I love that scene. I just, I always thought that was cool. Yeah, that, that I felt like they actually, like, this movie gave the characters a chance to breathe, and it gave the fans more what they wanted, mm-hmm. but I don't know if this was the movie that we would have saw when, you know, if, if Zack Snyder had kept his, you know, you know, directing and stuff and everything, and didn't have that family tragedy and didn't have to leave, I felt like this isn't the movie we would have saw. Yeah, and when it came out, this is something that strictly came because of all the backlash they saw and right. what they could fix. Right. That is true because there was no way he would have got a four-hour movie out no. of them. No, and it would have been cut down, and it probably wouldn't have been as good because what made this movie so good was flushing out everybody. Yeah. Like Cyborg was awesome. You know, I feel like Wonder Woman. She was about the same, you know, Wonder like Wonder Woman was about the same, but they gave her more action scenes, so mm-hmm. they kind of fleshed out her character as far as what she could do. That's and true. Stuff like that. But I mean, and it also kind of left like this, like I said, the whole thing with the, with uh, Aquaman, they set up some stuff to where Wonder Woman 1984 doesn't really make sense. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That movie. Did you like that movie? I liked it, but only, <laughs> here's the sad part. I liked it only because I like Pedro Pascal. <laughs> <laughs> And I like... Don't we all? I I like the work he does, and it's funny some of the stuff that they kind of came up with, like some of the character arcs and how Mm -hmm. they react and stuff. And I kind of like, okay, I liked it. Do I like it as a DC Wonder Woman movie in this whole universe? Personally, I didn't really like the storylines they were going with, especially because I felt like they kind of cheated just to bring Chris Pine back. I know! That was my biggest... (laughs) You were like... Wow, this was Yeah, I was like I was like really of all you're in a superhero universe. Yes. No one stays dead forever in a superhero universe. I know, and right. this is the way you're gonna bring this character back. So bad. It's so bad. Right? And it, I mean you could have figured out a different I, I understand what they went with it, but You know what's so I'm, annoying uh, about it to me as a woman? As a woman. As a woman, is that Wonder Woman, why do we need to make her 
a woman character that is still pining after some love from so long ago. She's Wonder Woman. Make her stronger. Make her care about different stuff. Like, make her story about her and not about a lost love or a man that she once loved. That is so annoying. Yeah, but it's, She's so much stronger than that. She's every, so much better. But that's every superhero. Batman, you know what I mean, has one. Superman has one. Everybody I, has I, that love. I think the love is more of a, a weakness because you have if you have a super being who's like completely super strong and they have no weakness, there's no way to stop them. Exactly. If you introduce the love interest. No, you got to you know, you know gotta what I mean? Why? Is but it hey, because hey, you, as, a as a woman? It doesn't mean that they do it good. I mean, they, they, they don't. Still, yeah. And know? it's just such bull crap. It's just so stupid. I think the only thing I like, though, about the Wonder Woman movie is at the very, very end, they gave a cameo to the original Wonder Woman. Yeah, that was And they made cool. her a character, like an in-canon character. That I thought cool. that was cool. I was like, okay, they they did a throwback. Like, right. That it was, was just, like, that just was cool. one second of the movie. It just bugged me because like, the whole 80s thing, I just feel it's like, been beaten to death. And it's like, yeah. oh, let's cash in on the 80s like everybody else is doing. And yeah, like, And they almost did it like too late just, just give yes. it give it but it's give, like they already did that and then you came in at the very end when we're over it yeah, yeah because like stranger things had already like beaten it down like to a t and like every movie was like oh we're going to the 80s oh the 80s and it's like dude we're done if you pay attention to stuff like t- five years ago it was 70s right a lot it's of movies like, were going back to the 60s and yeah. 70s now it's i guarantee you give it another year and we're gonna see a lot of movies going back mm. to the early 2000s or 90s no, no, no honestly definitely 90s, the 90s are coming yeah. back hard because yeah. even just the way people are dressing like i just bought a pair of shoes because they're in right now are so 90s yeah you oh, know? the doc martens are like hard yeah right yeah. now and like crush velvet and like scrunchies are yeah, back 90s. And, like, yeah. and honest to god i'm so excited i love the 90s <laughs> oh, it's funny. I Love hate the, the 90s. Are you kidding clothes, me? Dude. 90s are the best. No, I was all about that, like, early 2000s, like, Dickies, black concert t-shirts. Like, that was my jam, <laughs> dude. Like, Don't worry. Eventually, we'll catch up. Yeah, the, the, the studded the belts when uh, you're with 40. the belt buckles. Yes. I, I feel like there has to be, like, a 20-year gap yeah. for films yeah. to be like, okay, it's cool, okay, to go back yeah. to that genre. So yeah. give it, like, five years, ten years, and oh, then they'll go back so to their early 2000s. Excited, <laughs> so excited, dude. So excited. But no, overall, I thought it was awesome. So did I you super wait, enjoyed it? I, so because we've talked about Snyder Cut uh, so much, and it's like, well, all the hype, it's coming out, whatever. Did it live up to your expectations? I think it did. I think he definitely flushed it out. I am actually on the opposite side with Batman. He was probably my least favorite. Mm-hmm. Um, I just I was really kind of captivated by Cyborg. I I think he's a cool character. I always really liked him, but I liked him in the movie even more because in the first cut, he doesn't do anything. Like no. he's just very this background character that they just kind of throw. They show you his power, and I think a lot of people that are casual fans had no idea how powerful right. Cyborg is. really is, yeah. and that's what made this movie cool to oh, me okay. is because Aquaman has his own movie. Wonder Woman has her own movie. Flash has a TV show. You know what I mean? He, Batman is Batman. His own movie. Yeah, Batman. Yeah. Everybody knows Batman. Obviously. But yeah. I feel like that Cyborg... That is kind of true. I don't even know what his superpower is. Exactly. And yeah, in this movie, they actually show it. So like in the, his superpower is he's basically a supercomputer of alien technology, and he can infiltrate anything on Earth. So like in there's a sequence in this movie that oh, did not so exist in the cool. original one where you see him going into someone's bank account and he sees a, mo- a mom and kids struggling and he literally just gives them tens of thousands of dollars. Yeah. And automatically in her bank account. And he he's like that hero that But he's he, like watching this lady's life to yeah. see what she's doing to make sure she's worthy. Yeah. Of this. And he can control nuclear warheads, he can control governments. Oh, wow. so cool. He he his power is basically he has the world at his fingertips, but he doesn't use it. Oh, he okay. only has it if he actually needs it. And then it turns out at the end, he's a super being that can stop what's happening because he can joint with that technology. Oh, right. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. they set him up really good in this movie. Whereas in the original cut, it was like, he's just there. He's a robot really, person. Yeah. Oh, he's okay. not really, he's not really fulfilling his full thing. Mm-hmm. And I kind of see where, he the, the actual actor when he was talking about like allegations and yeah. like how they were treating him and stuff like that i kind of see now on like the different edits 
how his character's treated. I really? can only imagine how the actor was treated. Yeah. Oh, I can imagine. You know what I mean? Like there's like night and day difference. So, but yeah, it, uh, he's one of my favorite characters. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I want that jacket. Oh yeah. His high school, his high school jacket or his college on one. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. I was in love with his college letters. I was like, I love that jacket. <laughs> Cause it's like Gotham city college. And I was like, I need that jacket. <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty like, sure you can find it. Eventually you'll find it. Just, oh. don't, just don't order it off of like wish or something. Yeah. You know? Somebody <laughs> will make it and I will buy it just to sure, have it. Look for X. Look at uh, Etsy. I'm pretty sure someone will have it. That's true. Somewhere. <laughs> I will buy it. Especially after all this is going on. Yeah. I'm on the jock of that jacket. Hard. <laughs> Or it sh- well because I love Gotham and just seeing like something say Gotham on it like uh, as like a Letterman yeah, jacket. That's I'm pretty like, dope. Yeah, I need that. <laughs> like that was the, the biggest thing I got out of the movie. I was like, I'm gonna get that. Jacket. Dude, you could probably find. You're right, Etsy. Yeah. Absolutely, probably. Already just remember, uh, birthday's coming up. Anybody? Uh, that's what. What's I want. it called? The Gotham Letterman jacket. Yeah, yeah, it's what he wears in the Justice League movie. It's so cool. Or you, or you can commission someone to do it because they have websites where people make cosplay stuff. Oh yeah. And if you can get high resolution pictures from the film, Babs. And then send on it, it, and then ask someone, "Hey, can you make this?" They just commission them, and they'll make it. Because there's been a few, there's been a few people that I know oh, that they've found made. It. Co- oh, there you go. For sale. <laughs> it's not cheap. How oh much? shit. <laughs> How much is it? <laughs> I mean, it's actually not that bad, but I mean, for to buy for him, for what buddy. Is it? <laughs> Just don't worry about it. Your birthday's coming up. Whoa, whoa. I, I, Let's get a Gotham uh, <laughs> jacket. Let's go. Let's go. See, I can find my jackets. I ended up making my jacket. I have mine. Dude, yeah, no. Your jacket I love is your my, jacket. And it's like the Joker purple. That's yeah. what I love Honestly, about it. Chris, when I was talking to you and you were like talking, no, I don't mean to do this, but you were talking <laughs> and I was just like, Literally couldn't even look at you because I was like checking out all your patches on your jacket. Yeah, I, I have like, I have all my animations. So yeah. my, my thing, I made it a thing where in my house, if we've watched an anime or if we finished an anime, I get the patch for it. Oh, cool. <laughs> so like I have ones for like, you know, Pokemon, Akira, Dragon Ball Z, Kingdom Hearts because my wife loves that game. And oh, she, yeah. Yeah, she's played the games. And then I have on this side, I have uh, Digimon. I have Cowboy Bebop. I have Umbrella for, uh, for Resident Evil, Death Note. And I think I have another one down here, Capsule Corporation, and then for martial arts. And then I have uh, ones from Spirited Away. I have a Cobra Kai giant yes. one. I just haven't put them on here yet. So I have more patches. I, I was just laughing. He was walking up, and I'm like, I haven't seen you in how long, and I'm just looking at the jacket. Yeah. And I'm like, All right, I know yeah, that this one. Is the, so people, that people one. in Merced know me by this jacket now. Right. Like, I wear it everywhere. And it is like, like a, it's a pretty bright purple. Yeah, it's a bright purple. So that's why I get a lot of people are like, where did you find a bright purple jacket? And I'm like, this is actually a Hot Topic jacket back when Hot Topic actually sold cool clothing. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? When they had like that trip whatever brand yeah. and they had like, you know, wonky, like way out their clothing. I got this jacket like 10 years ago. Really? Yeah. And it's just, and then I started putting patches on it like yeah. last year and I was like, I you do. know what? It's a good that. jacket. Yeah. Hot Topic had some gems, dude. dude I had I a Playboy shirt. <laughs> it was like a, a button up and it said Playboy Talent Scout. And it was like a work shirt. You know what I mean? With like the two patches. Uh, and uh, Sprinkles had the photographer one. And his was red and mine was black. <laughs> I loved that shirt. Dude, I wore that shirt out. I just remember like. Wore it out? Yeah. Like it, it had started ripping. Like it just pretty much disintegrated. But I'll never forget. <laughs> I was in high school and like one of the people like helping or something. She's like, oh, you Playboy Talent Scout. She's like, what do you think? And I just remember being like. Lady, you mad old, but <laughs> you still cool. Excuse me. <laughs> you still cool. Older ladies could be playmates, yeah, too. Yeah, but I was like 16. How old was she? Young. Like 25? No, she's probably in her like <laughs> late 30s, but you know what I mean? That's that's diddle age right there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm sorry, what? Babs, you know, I was 16. She, was probably she wasn't going to diddle you. Hey, she was asking, you know what I mean? <laughs> You wish you could get diddled oh, by an old lady. That would have been nice. <laughs> oh, man. Don't talk about hey, diddling. MJ did not diddle. Yes, he did. <laughs> no diddle. All right. <laughs> Chris. Let's, Chris. No, Chris. What, don't. What? Don't Chris, you. Answer, don't. The, shh, answer the question. What? Did MJ diddle or did he not diddle? <sighs> <laughs> and you know, I'm going to plead the fifth on this one. Thank you. That's how I feel. <laughs> <laughs> he diddled. He did not diddle. He diddled. <laughs> Babs, sh- shut it down. <laughs> shut it down, Babs. Look, I'm telling you, man. Cold Stone, Steve Austin. <laughs> 
So I've been watching WrestleMania and Cold Stones. Um, Cold Stones Stone, move Stone Cold? the stunner. Stone Cold? Yeah. The stunner. <laughs> There's a whole episode, um, like documentary about the stunner. The, like just the move. There's a literally an entire episode just about his move, the stunner. And there's like a newer wrestler who does the stunner. And before he started doing the stunner, he went back and asked Stone Cold. If it was okay. If it was okay. He's like, hey, can I do the stunner? He basically That's got nice. his blessing and now he does the stunner. I miss uh, the diamond cutter. Well, uh, who, who did that one? Diamond Dallas Page. Page. Yeah. The diamond cutter. Oh. Yeah. All right. Enough about your wrestling, Chris. <laughs> tell us about your new projects. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, this is what I want to get into. That was why I invited him on the show. Not for Babs to talk about, you what? know, whatever he Babs likes wrestling. Uh, on a side note, I did like wrestling. I, I watched it a lot growing up. I even watched Impact Wrestling, the TNA, oh, growing yeah. up. And by, by by far, my favorite wrestling move, though, has to be the Canadian Destroyer. If you guys have ever seen it. I don't think no. I've seen and, it. Yeah, this guy literally, like, grabs the person like he's going to do, like, you know, like, pick him up, do a Batista bomb. So he uh-huh. puts the head between their legs yeah. facing down. Oh, right. And he does a front flip pile driver. What? what? <laughs> yeah. It, go back and look at it. Okay. Look up Canadian Destroyer TNA. I'm going to look it up. And it is an insane move. And I think it's legal now in the United States, but they still do it in Japan. Jeez. Oh really? Yeah, it, it is like it's like a crazy move. Like my brother, me and my brothers would grow up watching it. And then, funny on a side note, for like six years, I had a job doing video for pro wrestling in Central Valley. Dang! So like I would go. I got to meet Super Crazy. I got to meet Sandman. I got to meet uh, Tommy Dreamer. I got to meet a few wrestlers that would you know they were up there in age, but they were coming through the circuit, kind of introducing younger wrestlers. And there was a few people that I got to meet going up you know, the ranks and stuff like that. And it was pretty cool. Cause they, you know, there were local shows, there were smaller shows, smaller venues, but it was insane. Some of the moves these guys would come up with. Jeez. And like, I'm, I'm the camera up. guy. I got it. Yeah. I'm a camera guy and I'm like moving out of the way, like hoping I don't get hit. Right. It's like, you know what I mean? Kind of, kind of took a little bit of the behind the scenes stuff out of it for me. Cause I was yeah. like, oh, okay, now I know how things worked. But it was still, it's it's still a feat to see these guys perform. It's like, it's dangerous. It's still a grind. No, it's yeah. a grind. Yeah. yeah. It's still I a, mean, dude, and especially do it day in and day out. Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, could you imagine? Oh, I don't envy them. You know, we've been all. watching um, Young Rock. Have you seen that on Hulu? I've seen the promos and stuff for it, but I haven't watched it yet. So that's kind of like Logan started watching that. I've never watched uh, wrestling before, but I've been getting into it because... Especially watching Young Rock, he you know grew up in like a super wrestling family. Like all of his uncles, his grandpa, his dad, everyone was a wrestler. And I I don't think I really appreciated wrestling until I started watching this. Where I'm like, I just always thought it was stupid and fake. But honestly, the work they're putting out there is super dangerous. It's super crazy. It's like obviously scripted, and you yeah, know. But see, that's my favorite part of it is the feuds. That's what makes yeah wrestling what it is so like a heel to me is what has always been the greatest part of wrestling and that's why like on this show a heel is really the best because everybody loves to hate the heel right (laughs) and in wrestling when the rock was a heel wrestling i feel was at its best right because i loved watching him be a villain yeah Honestly, yeah. The Rock is the best. And what, like we watched a WrestleMania where he like he uh fought Hulk Hogan and then there was like a like a the headliner show after him. So I watched the fight between him and Hulk Hogan which was freaking amazing. And then the next, you know, whatever like fight came on and I was just like, eh. I was like, I just want to watch The Rock. <laughs> yeah. Like even now, like me, someone who's new to wrestling is like C- completely captivated by this man mm. and I, that's all i want to watch now i'm like i just want to watch the rock he's so funny <laughs> but it's but the thing it is is watching it is like could just the fights that they do the the stamina it takes the just the physical you yeah. know capability that they have is just crazy yeah i've, I've gotten in a ring once in my life I've actually got, I can actually say that I actually got in a wrestling ring what? and went not toe to toe, but actually got to do like some moves with one of the wrestlers. Right. 
my god i would they were, i would never do that as a career right. there is no freaking way i'm like i the ropes hurt when you bounce off oh, them. I'm sure the, the, the mat it's the padded mat, but it's yeah. not uh, i mean it's not forgiving and i and that was just me like messing around saying hey i've always wanted to do this kind of right. this and they're just like yeah sure show's over just do it before they take down the ring and then one of the guys was there and he was talking me through it and this was like one of the first shows i ever went to and then my wife and a few friends would go with me to help as a second camera operator. But this first show, it was one of my friends went with me. And I was like, my wife's not here to... Right. Know, I, was just, yeah. and I was in there and I was like, yeah, no, I'm never going to do this. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no, no this one and done. Like, one you guys like, you want to try a move? And I was like, no. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. <laughs> the ring, I was like, this is not happening. Honestly, <laughs> you could probably die. Yeah, like, I, was like, I was like, no. I go, it's cool. I go, you get like this rush of being in the middle of the ring. Right, right. But it takes a person who is like committed to that. Mm-hmm. to do that and well and i think you like also that. have to have some kind of stunt training almost or yeah something. you have training and stuff like they teach you how to fall they teach right, you how to take right, a hit how right. to roll stuff like that and it, uh. you know me and my brothers grew up you know wrestling in a bounce house and right pretending that we're wrestlers and stuff <laughs> right. like that yeah oh, it's yeah. nowhere near that <laughs> it's not like it is scary when you're in the ring you're looking at it, you're like i don't want to go there i don't, <laughs> don't want to go in the turnbuckle that's not a, <laughs> that's not that's not a side of a bounce house a little inflatable part i'm not doing that it's like <laughs> no i'm good <laughs> I'm good. Um, no, okay, so sorry. what are the projects you okay, got coming so, up? Okay, <laughs> so... Uh, tell us what you've been up I'll to. I'll tell you the two secret ones first. Okay. Yes. yes. Okay, so... Uh, the inside six? scoop. The inside six? scoop. So just some people in certain communities on Facebook that, you know, private groups or whatever know about this at the point. But basically, uh, this is the first time we're talking about it. We're making a live-action Digimon and a live-action Death Note uh, short film. And there, if if you guys aren't familiar with it, Digimon is uh, the, it was actually a precursor to Pokemon. It actually came out before oh, Pokemon. Okay. But Pokemon got more popular because they started the trading card and they started the actual like merchandising right. first. Mm-hmm. Whereas Digimon was still in the process of getting their first season out, and they were a trading card, but they weren't as popular. If you go to Tokyo or you go to Japan, Digimon's more popular in Japan oh, than okay. Pokemon. Right. It's kind of reversed to where mm-hmm. they're at. And so we're uh, Digimon's been my favorite thing since I was a kid. And when I saw that Toei Animation was making a reboot of the series, and like I followed the series, all the shows, all the movies, everything like that, I kind of sat down and was like, I want to make a Digimon short. So we made a script and put it together and stuff like that. And all the Digimon are live action. There's no oh, animated, no dude. animation. There's really yeah. We we took our time to try and figure out how to do this. And, and how did you do it? Puppets and yes! camera tricks and stuff like yes! that. And actual characters and costumes. Yes. Uh, yeah. And my daughter is in it. We actually have filmed 50% of it. We're still filming wow. stuff because when COVID hit, it really shut stuff. We actually oh, started sure. We actually started production on this as far as like designing everything a year ago. Oh, wow. And then we started filming in June. And then it was kind of, you know, it's kind of sp- spread out filming until like December. Mm-hmm. And then we stopped a little bit and we're picking up again next month. Oh, okay. So we're trying to get this out, and we've we've released a trailer. We had somebody do like a review on the trailer. Like they were like, "Where are the Digimon?" They're like, "They're." T-. It was the first time I ever watched a YouTube video where someone was reviewing my work, right? And like breaking it down to trying to figure out the story. And I'm like, "This guy's way off." <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I don't mind talking about the story, but it's like there's certain parts of it that are a secret, right? But the idea is is that we our characters take place in California. Mm-hmm. It takes place five years after the last film. So if you're we're listening to this and you're a Digimon fan, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. So it takes place five years after the last film uh, and it introduces the possibility of a multiverse in the Ooh. digital world. Oh, so cool. in Digimon, you have like the first three seasons are a certain characters with certain stuff. The fourth season is Digimon in a different universe. So mm-hmm. it's the, you know, the rules are different. So that the fifth season, a different universe the rules are different. And I guess it was the maker's way of kind of like keeping it fresh for new mm-hmm. audiences but we kind of came up with a way of how the digital world will glitch and you can pop out of different realities. Oh, wow. So we actually really mix cool. we actually mix characters. So there's actual original characters and there's one character that is played by a Japanese actor that is from the original series yes. and there's another character that's brand new that's played by my daughter and she is an American character that kind of gets involved with everything and then we have brand new Digimon that we created specifically oh, for the sure, right. Dude, and stuff like sweet. that. And, and some, we have a throwback. One of the, like, like actually, I have a picture I'll show it to you guys afterwards to give it to you, but we have Pumpkinmon, who was one of my favorite Digimon and we actually built a full-on costume oh my gosh. of Pumpkinmon. Right. And so he's a character that is like really like causing a lot of mischief and we have, uh, for sure, we have Pandamon in there, which yeah. is a giant panda and then we have um, Gabumon, which is uh, kind of like one with like a unicorn horn mm-hmm. those characters for sure are in the short 
Damn. And then there's a few other ones that are surprises that you got to watch. Oh, okay, and go, cool. Yeah, yeah, hell yeah. Cool. So the idea is, is like if this short gets traction and people like it, it could lead to a little series. It could lead to a show or it could show Toy Animation like, hey, there's an avenue here that's unexplored. Right. Because we tried, I tried looking back on all the stuff of un, unquestioned questions that did not have answers going back to my youth, like looking at all the episodes. And I'm like, this is how it would play out 20 right. years later. And so, put it together. so we did that. I love that you're doing it with puppets. Like, yeah. I'm not going to lie. That gets and, me And I'm going to announce it here. Buddy is actually playing the voice of one of the Digimon. Yes. So, <laughs> so he, he pretty much just was like, hey, I'm working on a project. Chris. I need your voice. <laughs> Chris, can I say something really quick? Well, well, can Bab say something really well, quick? Well, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> So voice actors need to be actors, right? They need to be able to act. Yes, they do. But there's there's always a, a voice acting is always different than actual acting in front of a camera because it, some people actually come out of their shell behind a microphone. Can I so say something? It can be a little different. Yeah. He can't act. We'll see. I got we'll shots, see. son. He can go on a show and shoot the shit, but he can't act, bro. Well, what if I made a character that he's just shooting the shit? Yeah, all the time? dude. I'm over here. I'm, See, I'm big time. No, okay, Chris, I've given him a script <laughs> before. I've given him a script. What okay? script? What, one time we were trying to make a 10-second uh, video in the backyard. Us. And you're like, eh. Uh, uh, well, we'll uh, see. We'll see. My we'll, name's but. Uh, uh, we'll, uh, what's we'll, my name? We'll, we'll, yeah, he we'll, gave we'll, it to me like two seconds before. He's gonna give me time. Yeah, we'll, no, we're to gonna really, yeah, like yeah. work it. Hey. Babs has something to say. Babs. He can shoot the shit if he's shooting the shit. If you give him a script of him shooting the shit, it's shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll, we'll, we'll see. I'm, what I'm going to do is uh, we're going to put it out and then I'm, I'm going to let the audience decide. I'm going to let the audience decide. I'm, I'm hoping that a lot of people see this and they kind of go, okay, live action anime can be done right. For yeah. sure. Cause, Definitely. Because we're trying to make the characters look as original to the thing as possible. And I understand there's like this fine line between doing... Uh, you know, making a character three dimensional and it just looks off, it right. doesn't look right. Mm -hmm. But we try, we especially with Pumpkin Mon, we found like that middle ground of like this looks exactly like the cartoon, right? Dude. Just if it yes. was in three D, yeah. You know what I mean? And it's actually Pumpkin Mon is relatively about the same height as my daughter, so we actually built the costume for her to be in it. So she actually plays Pumpkin Mon in part of the show, yes. and she's, she's so physically running around and causing mischief. I really love her. Oh, she's <laughs> yeah, so and so we we kind of put we kind of put the stuff together, and then also on the other side we're making a death note uh so if anybody's listening to this obviously wait this is the second project you're doing this is yes. the second project i'm doing so okay. death note is uh people netflix did their attempt at it and, and it wasn't good uh, <laughs> it was interesting it, it, if netflix if they didn't have a like i'm gonna say the same thing when it comes to like dragon ball evolution and when it comes to like a few other live action if there was no source material to go off of and it was its own brand original story that was just created out of nowhere yeah it would have stood on its own as a okay. good movie but it because it's compared to the original there's no way okay right. so i decided to write a short that would correct that so right. it takes place in the united states and it takes place years after the show ended mm -hmm. and it basically shows what the what the repercussions were because of everything. And we actually have a secret character that ties in to the original show what? that's being voiced by, I can't say on here, but he's mm. being voiced by a very good friend of mine. And he sounds scary. Like the actual character, yes. the dub actor from the anime. So the, I'm super excited for that one. Cause that's all live action as well. And we actually have that one 50% filmed. We have to film the rest of the stuff. Right. Do you feel like, like that. Do you feel like Netflix doesn't get it right because they don't have people working on the show that actually watch this stuff? Or yes. why do you think they... Okay. Because, uh, like, for example, Netflix has an uh, Avatar show yeah. that they're working on. The original creators were on there, and then the original creators left because there was a conflict. Right. And Netflix still continued with their show. Which sucks because that live-action right? movie was terrible. Yeah. And that show's amazing. Hey. And it's really the only American anime show or anime show that yeah like we had you that know was, what uh, I mean? that, yeah. yeah and then the original creators went off and now they're doing a follow up series oh okay because they're they they so basically co correct it they're like corrected they're, they're doing their own thing because they're like these people were not so I don't think it's mainly like Netflix as a whole I think it's just a few players in there they're just kind of like we want to control it it's our company and if they give too much you know, creative liberty to someone else. Right. They're and not the people that, yeah. And, and I feel like, especially when it comes to like a medium of taking something that's a cartoon to live action, mm -hmm. if you don't have the original creators or at least a hardcore fan who knows that stuff right. inside and out, 
it's not going to be very good. Right. Because you're going to, like me, Digimon and Death Note, I can I can tell you every single episode with my eyes closed because I, I grew up on that stuff. Right. And I, I love Trigun. I love, you know, Sailor Moon. I love all these other mm-hmm. shows, but I wouldn't touch them with a 10-foot pole because I'm not an expert in that. Right. And it's very easy to do like a live action, you know, Pokemon. And they got lucky with the live action Pokemon movies because they didn't use Ash. They didn't use... No, Misty. they kind of they, w- stayed in the universe, but went somewhere totally different. Right. And I think that was very smart on their yeah, part. Yeah, it was very smart. But a lot of times, Hollywood doesn't follow that rule. They, right. they take a character and they're just like, oh, we're going to make the main character look a little different and change things. Right. It's just like, right. that's not what Don't I grew up that. with. Exactly. Mm-hmm. You know Don't what I mean? That. So, yeah. So we got those two things coming out. And uh, the goal is to have them come out this summer. Mm-hmm. So people will be able to see him and share Dude, him I'm and pumped. like him and stuff like that. What are you not doing? Because I remember <laughs> I was trying to get a project off the ground and COVID really murdered that. <laughs> but it, I asked Chris, he's like, done. Let, when do you want to do it? Yeah, no, I, I, that I died a horrible death. Yeah, no, I, I don't, I don't ever stop. Like I, <laughs> I, I'm always like moving and stuff. And then when COVID hit, it was one of those things where I could take two roads. I could either, you know, lay down and die and kind of like see how this goes and stuff like that. Or I can make the best of it. And what I decided to do was I spent the year, you know, working on my home, taking care of, you know, my kids and, you know, kind of figuring things out and, you know, spending time with my wife and everything. And then on the flip side of that, I was writing scripts and Mm -hmm. I was prepping stuff because I knew we were going to come out of this somewhere. Mm-hmm. And we started working on the Digimon short and we started working on that with just family and friends who were always around us, never going out right, and stuff like that. And it forced me to write certain stuff in there that made it like that. Death Note, we actually have actors, but we actually shot the stuff with those actors before COVID hit. Oh, okay. So any of the stuff, you're going to be able to tell any of the stuff that happens after pre-COVID, is you're going to have certain scenes as just one guy mm-hmm. talking to another character that's not there. And the other scenes, there's going to be a whole bunch of people in it. So you're going to see like, uh, right. Matt, so I had to yeah. figure out creatively how to write it in there to where it would make sense. Why mm-hmm. this person's alone versus why he's not with everyone else. Yeah. So the whole year, I just kind of practiced my craft, figure it out how to do stuff, made little short films, did little tiny things, basically figured out a way to when this thing dies down, coming out of it ahead. Mm-hmm. And there's, I had a handful of, film companies that are like mine that are small in central valley that have closed doors they just oh, they yeah. just basically random post on facebook or something like hey we're calling it quits we're not gonna be doing this anymore we'll still help you with crew and stuff but we're not going to be putting anything out of under our name and it's disappointing mm-hmm. because it's like a lot of these people i know that was their livelihood and it sucks but I like i got lucky because a lot of my clients thank god like you know i filmed so much stuff in the last five years that they were just like, hey, we need a COVID commercial. And I just went back in the archives and just changed some wording. And, and I got right. paid doing editing like that. Oh, and okay. I was able to make ends meet. Whereas there's other people that they don't have a steady client base. And they were just like, we can't go out and film. We can't go get work. We're, right. we're screwed. So, you know, me putting all this stuff together, like I just don't stop. Because uh, if I stop, I die. That's pretty much how it is. Like, I can't. Mm-hmm. I, my brain's always moving at a thousand miles an hour. I don't know if that's ADHD or what it is. I mean, but it's like... <laughs> It's always going. <laughs> it, I don't ever turn off. The only time I ever like stop thinking is when I'm sleeping. And even then I have crazy dreams and I'll wake up and grab a notepad and start writing right. some stuff down, which is actually how my next short I'm going to talk about came about. Okay. So, Tell us so, about that. Uh, the Selma Arts Center, uh, they are you know, in Selma, California by Fresno. They put together a kind of a contest every year. Mm-hmm. And this year they're doing it more of like film. And so they basically put a mass call out saying, hey, if anybody had any scripts or short films that they want to enter in this contest, we're going to pick five and then we're going to stream them on video on demand and we're going to give a chance for people to vote for their favorite and then they get to win, you know, a cash prize or whatever. So I had a script that had been sitting on my computer for five years Mm -hmm. and I was like, okay, I'm going to submit this one. And then I had some concept art that I poorly drew Mm -hmm. five years ago and I submitted it. And then I got an email back a few days later saying, hey, we really like your stuff. You know, we're going to have like a Zoom call kind of thing. And so I was like, okay. So we set up a Zoom call. And the guy's name is Claudio. He's one of the the project managers. He was really cool to talk Mm -hmm. to. And he's like, his main concern was, I see your short film that you're doing has robots in it. Uh, Do you have computing power and digital to do that digitally? Is it going to look like Terminator? What's going on? I'm like, we're doing everything practical. 
<laughs> Keep in mind, at this time, I had nothing built, nothing done. Right. <laughs> and he's like, we're doing everything practical. And he's like, can you do that? And I'm like, I can do that. Four <laughs> days later, I had a working prototype. Oh, my God. Yes. And so I sent him the email, sent him pictures and stuff like that or whatever, and we got selected. And wow. so our film, Sakura, which is going it, to translate from Japanese and it's uh, cherry blossom, right, mm-hmm. uh, is about a little girl who lives in a post-apocalyptic world with her family. They don't trust robots because robots are trying to kill them. And she ends up getting separated from her dad and there's a robot that saves her life. And this robot has no memory. So he basically is like, I know your dad's a programmer. If I take you to your dad, can he help me retrieve my memory? So the whole short is about them getting back to her father and not dying in the process. Mm -hmm. And it follows along the line of, can you trust someone? The whole point of the short is, can you trust someone that you've been brought up to not like? Mm -hmm. And I feel like in the world today, it's really relevant because there's a lot of people that don't like someone because of the color of their skin or their race or what they feel. And so this is something that's like, it's as simple as it's not a, color of your skin it's a robot and a little kid right and if a little kid can learn to trust a robot that's been trying to kill her her entire life then i'm pretty sure one human being can put their differences aside for right. another human being yeah. right and stuff so that's kind of the point of the short that we're I kind like of trying it. to get that sounds really cool yeah and so we put all together and stuff like that and we just wrapped filming yesterday and we still have the audio for the robot and stuff to do and everything but i mean i'm super excited for everyone to see it yeah. That honestly <laughs> sounds so amazing. For one, just love that um, your daughter's going to be in it because I love to see all of her films. Mm-hmm. But I think it is like sometimes it's so important to take like sci-fi or kind of nerdier kind of like concepts or whatever and make it a little bit more relevant to the world because it it seems like sometimes it doesn't make sense that all of us human beings like can't get along in a lot of ways for like all weird things like Mm -hmm. sexual orientation, race, politics, religion, but you put a human being in a robot and it's such a simple story where it's like it, it, for some reason it makes a little bit more sense when it seems so hard for us every single day. Yeah. And so we we try to make everything make sense and be it as stripped down as simple as possible. Right. And so we had two costumes that we built in five days we had all practical stuff everything lights up everything you know we had practical you know weapons and stuff and we're out here filming and we had stunts and we had fighting and we had you know all the stuff going off and we had i had a lot of duct tape to hopefully (laughs) keep stuff together (laughs) because by the last day by yesterday we were doing like the superhero landing shot right and like the knee pad kept coming off and i was like (laughs) we just gotta get this shot we gotta get this shot so like we we put everything together and stuff like that the trailer the so so the selma they have a page um so it's the Selma Arts uh, Center. They have, you know, you can find them on Facebook. And then they have kind of like, you know, the Selma Originals uh, Film Festival is the actual thing that they're doing. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're going to release the trailer April 7th around there. So people can see it. And then I'm going to put it on my Facebook. And I'm, I'll, nice. share it, I'll share it with you guys at Harley Heroes. Okay, so you guys can see it. Uh, and then the actual film itself is going to be uh, debuting April 30th at 7 o'clock. Oh, cool. Uh, and it you go to Selma Arts Center, you can purchase like a ticket. It's like $5. Uh-huh. But basically, the purchasing of the ticket gives you the ability to vote. That's pretty much what it is. Oh, cool. So oh, you wow. get to see it. You get to see the short. And then you vote for your favorite. And so we're trying to get as many people to check it out. And if they, li- you know, you don't have to vote for our film. Oh, please. We're because, voting for your vote. But, but if, but <laughs> let's, let's help I'm her boy. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, if, if, yeah. But if you guys, you know, vote for it and stuff like that, it, it means a lot. And then we're going alongside four other short films and, you know, I haven't seen any of them. I've seen a little bit of one of them. Mm-hmm. Right. Cause I actually know the person who put it together uh-huh. uh, and they're really, really good. And so I'm like, okay, that's our competition right now. But I don't know any of the other shorts. Right. I'm not going to know until the trailers drop the yeah. beginning of April Ooh, what to expect. So okay, yeah. I got Make to sure say, the Selma Arts Center, you guys, check that out. So when is the trailer dropping? So the trailer is going to be dropping uh, the f- around the 7th of okay, April. Of April. Of the, yeah, because okay. we have to get them the trailer. You know, We have to email it to them and get all the stuff in because they have the criteria of what we have to do. We are on a time restraint. Mm-hmm. So we, I get it to them by the 7th. I don't know if they're dropping it then on the 7th, okay. but I'm going to send them an email and be like, hey, you know, I want to drop it too. So let me know so yeah. that I can release it. You're like, so get I want to buzz it to my people. Going yeah. on and stuff like that because I have a lot of people who are curious about it and there's even like, we got like, I don't know how many people walking by because we filmed at local parks. I don't know how many people walking by going, what are you doing? Right. Yeah. And I was like, hey, check, here's all the information. Well, can, when can we see it? And I'm like, I'm going to have a trailer. Uh, pretty soon. Calm down. Calm down so you guys can check it out and stuff like that. Nice. And yeah. So we're excited. And we also have an original score oh, and original sweet. stuff for it. So, so I'm, dope. 
I'm super excited about it. Like we we teamed up with um with with Artlist. So the Artlist is a, a website where filmmakers can kind of go online, and I got a subscription and stuff for it. And so I reached out to like a few of like the artists and stuff on there that have like custom. They basically, it's like picture you're a professional band and you just upload some of your favorite songs, and mm-hmm. then you purchase the license the licensing, and then you can use them in your shorts and use them in your features. Oh, okay. Dude, that's cool. right. So we have we have one song from an artist from Japan. And then we have a few songs from England and they're just the artists and stuff that are putting debuting their songs on our shorts. Dude, so I'm super excited cool. for it. We have like a killer soundtrack. Dude, <laughs> like, that's that's like, awesome. Yeah. So yeah, I'm pretty excited to sh- you know, share all that so, stuff. No, I love thanks it. For Thank doing you so it. much, Chris, because we really enjoy your stuff. We love your shorts. You know, we love your oh. daughter. She's so amazing. No, we've been, we've kind of been like knowing each other for about four years now, right. which yeah. is crazy. Yeah, and all your shorts are super, super amazing. Everything and just seeing, seeing how far you've come. Right. Like, yeah, it, it, last year, 2020 threw everybody for a loop. Oh, yeah, sure. It definitely. was like, that was a year I was going to do my first feature, and then the rug got pulled out from underneath. And then I was like, okay, I'm going to put my stuff on Amazon Prime. And then Amazon Prime started pulling original shorts, and they don't show mm. any of that stuff anymore for indie, indie filmmakers. Oh, so really? I'm like, yeah, they don't yeah. do any of that. So I'm like, okay, 2021, I got to go the hard route and I'm going to put stuff in festivals and I'm going to yeah. put stuff out. So hopefully kind of hit the grind. Yeah. I kind of want to, I just want to make stuff that entertains people. Right. Yeah. Well, it's, yeah. it's great stuff. We love it. Yeah. I appreciate it. So thank you. That was really cool. So, so we do have an email real quick. Do you want to do that or the, we'll do the email first. Okay. Okay. So this is from uh, C nasty. Sidekick mayo. C nasty. C nasty. So it's titled, it wasn't Agatha, it was Babs. <laughs> <laughs> Babs did it. C nasty reporting in. Let's address the elephant in the room off the top. Dilly, what the heck, bro? You are retiring just as I start my guest commentating? I have to say I was super depressed. I was hoping to do a show with you, but alas, it might not be meant to be. I wish you nothing but the best. Babs, you hell spawn. <laughs> Why don't you just crawl back into your Bloody Mary? <laughs> All that attitude for no reason. Shame on you. Shame. I love that. <laughs> Did you guys watch Falcon and Winter Soldier and Justice League? Four stars for Falcon and Winter Soldier. 2.5 for Justice League. Ooh. <laughs> Hope to do a show with you guys again soon. P.S. Big shout out to Mammy and hopefully enjoying retirement. She is enjoying retirement, yeah. except for that I put her to work at the salon. So. Yeah. But can I tell you something really quick? She is mad at you. No, real quick. My mom started working here last Mammy. week. Uh-huh. Mammy. Last week. Her first week, right? She worked Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Great. She comes in on Monday to help me this Monday. She's like, hey, I'm going to have to take the week off. I'm going to see grandpa. And I'm like, okay, for one, I didn't get like a, a written request for your time off. And two, uh, it's your second week of work. Uh, she and is. you're taking the week off? Babs, you need to calm down. Mammy hurt her back because you're making her lift heavy stuff. She's <laughs> old. Don't make Mammy lift stuff. I'm like, listen. She's like, I tweak my back because cheese. Babs over here is making me like lift boxes and move stuff around. She's like, <laughs> I'm literally supposed to be answering the door. And then doing laundry and doing laundry and that's it. And she's like, and she yelled at me cause I was on the phone. <laughs> no. So the, for her first day. Okay. Her uh-huh. first day, I told her she's in the front room here. Right. Cause like where the salon is, you walk into the front door and there's this room to the side that is a mess. So I'm like, mom, you have to keep this door closed. Cause I don't want clients to see it. It's a disaster. She's like, okay, okay. So I go back. I haven't seen her in God knows how long. I go back there. The door's wide open. She's in there kicking back in her office chair on the phone with her friend. Good. And I'm like, get off the <laughs> phone and get back to work. <laughs> Babs is a little, uh, I don't, I little might bit have, of a tyrant. I might have to let her go. And they say, I'm the mad king. <laughs> the, over here. the thing is, is we don't pay her, so she can come in whenever yeah. she wants. So love you, mammy. <laughs> love you, ma'ams. <laughs> love you, ma'ams. Okay, um, so we do have. <laughs> I got, I got a big announcement. And this is hard to talk about. This is very hard. Um, at Chris being here actually is kind of nice. He's been here for. He's known us for a long time, but uh, we have a big announcement for Hardly Heroes. It saddens me, but uh, I feel it's about time. Um, Hardly Heroes will be ending. We are going to end on our five year reunion, which is coming up in the first week of May. May thirteenth. Yeah, that will be our final episode. Um, 
we, you know, we've made a lot of great relationships, like talking with, you know, with Chris and Curtis and Bird and Goat and, you know, Sonny and Johnny and see nasty and you know Schuler, Schuler, and you know and then you know uh, <laughs> um you know you're talking about parm alarm you're talking about um Sprinks. chasm sinker you know manny and Sprinks and all those guys like that you know that was always hardly heroes and we just kind of feel like you know it's it's had its run we had 200th episode we've done three movie events and we just kind of feel like it's it's time to kind of hang up the towel and, you know, kind of do something else and see where it goes. But uh, we're giving anybody that wants their shot to come on the show or to write in or send voice memos or anything you want to do. We're giving you that little bit of time to really, you know, say what the show meant to you or do a bit that you always wanted to do. Or maybe if you want to come on the show. You know, space is kind of filling up fast. I, it's, you know, it's the first time we're telling you guys, but I know there's a couple of OG characters that I would really like to have come back. Uh, um, next week, I do have Curtis Corona coming on, which means a lot. Um, I do want to have Goat back on. You know, I kind of laugh. We had come up with this decision. That's why we recorded late. But knowing that Chris was already going to be here was kind of one of the reasons because there was no way I wanted to end it without not having him on. He was a big part for us, not just in, you know, making our short promo video, but for the sheer fact of when we first went to a con, we met him and he was gung ho and we were all gung ho and we just like instantly clicked and it was really fun. Like no, that was promote. like the first con. Yeah. And then too. when we did his festival, you yeah. know, that was so much fun and like that type of stuff i will always love but i don't know we you know we just got a lot of stuff going on and you know it's been it's been a grind keeping this show together well, i think this is what i think hardly heroes for so long was doing so, like so much fun stuff meeting chris going to all the cons working with colossus girl you know, doing the interviews, running the cons, doing the movie events. Like, I mean, we were going at it hard. Yeah. And it was such a huge time commitment, but it was something that we really loved. And mm. it was something we were absolutely 100% willing to do. I think, honest to God, not to blame, you know, COVID for everything, but it was a huge hit because mm -hmm. we couldn't do events. We couldn't go out. We couldn't do cons. We couldn't do movie events. We were just in the studio, just the three of us, sometimes at home, recording, you know, and not getting out into the community, not doing stuff. And I think we all kind of found other stuff that, mm -hmm. you know, I opened this business. I opened, you know, the salon. We have this building. You know, you have your career. You have stuff you're doing. Dilly's got his life. We, mm -hmm. we all just, I think, eventually were like, you know, we're not giving it everything we anymore. Got. And we did everything we kind of wanted to do. We did a lot of the stuff that we wanted Dude, to do. Dude, I if you would have told me five years ago that I would have met the people I did and I could have helped raise money for a charity that I will still always do whatever I can for, for Project Wish Upon a Star, meeting them, meeting Chris, meeting the people that I've met, getting go and Curtis Corona back together as friends, like lovers doing three movie events, doing, having our own beer, doing a 200th episode, all of that stuff. I would have never guessed that I would have got to do. And it means the world to me. But at the same time, I, I kind of feel like I'm ready to try something new and ready to do something different. Well, you know, you know what? This is like kind of how I feel too, because I feel this way so strongly about The Walking Dead that it should have ended four seasons, five seasons ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, I wish it would have gone out on a high note and I feel like Hardly Heroes ending on a five year. We've done a, a bunch of fun stuff. I don't want this show to keep going where it's like drunk ass babs and old ass buddy and we're just phoning it in it's like we've mm. had the heart and we've done it and i want to go out on a high note where we're Me like too. we have loved every minute of this but i don't want to get to a place where this show is like the monkey on our back anymore yeah. you know it's like the thing that's dragging us down it's like 
you know, we're getting older. I'm goddamn 40 years old. You know, it's like, what am I going to be 55 and doing Hardly Heroes? Mm drunk off my ass is that what we're gonna do i know that's you know nobody wants to see that so i think five years we did it we did it hard we did it strong and it's over you have another five years you guys can have another reunion yeah exactly right and And you know what i mean people might try to you know reenact what we did but we did it first and we came hard and i think there's something to say about that and i wish you know other people the best and whatever they want to do but what we did and how I feel about it is something special. And I think we captivated it and captivated a huge group of people that I think would have never met that met and got to do things together. And that stuff I'll always hold dear to my heart. And I feel like she said, it's, it's better to end on a high note than to just kind of keep dragging it on. And we've had a lot of people come and go. All those people that have left have always be family, you know, but it, I think it's just time and it's I do think that I've, Hardly Heroes will live on. We're still going to keep our Podbean channel so you can still always listen to Hardly Heroes. Mm-hmm. Um, everything will just go on to it. All of our After Dark, every episode we've ever done will be on the channel. So you can always listen to Hardly Heroes. You can always go back. And because we'll still have that channel. Yeah. Never, you never know. <laughs> you never know. Keep an eye out because in two years, they may, they may be. I might get a, a wild tear. Right? Never know. Like... But keep that. Keep subscribe. Just subscribe to it. You'll yeah. you won't even notice it. Just keep it subscribed. Yeah. We'll keep it on there, and you never know what might happen. But and trust me, trust. trust. I swear, if Sonny or Johnny comes to America. We will send set something up because if they're going to come from Norway, exactly, we will make sure that we can get as many people we can together of the OGs and anybody that's meant anything to this show together. But as of this, I think it's cool. I think, you know, Sector 7 will always be here and it will be a way of, you know, an homage and we can still gather and doing that kind of stuff, which will be awesome. But I think... Well, that's kind of the thing I think is like Hardly Heroes may not be a podcast anymore after April 13th or May 13th, but it's still uh, it's still Hardly Heroes. We still have the group. We still have our friends. We still have Sector 7 as a meeting place. You know, we want to have like little mini Comic Cons here and game nights and movie nights and all sorts of stuff that we can still reach out to all of Mm -hmm. our listeners through that we're just not going to be doing a weekly podcast yeah and it's been a grind dude five years never missing an episode it's been a lot like trying to keep that yeah that streak alive honestly it makes me literally kind of nauseous to think about it because even though i've only been on the show for a little while i've been involved in it 100 percent since the get you Mm -hmm. know when you started it i was like of course my little brother support and then when Groot was on, of course, support, support. And then I was on and it just became so much better. But it really just took off after that. Um, and I, then when Babs joined. Uh, that's what ended it was Babs. <laughs> it was really the nail in the coffin. I was like, I can't deal with another persona. So I'm done. But um, if there's anything you ever wanted to do or be a part of the show or I had always thought about writing in, but never did, or any voice memos or anything. Now is the time. Cause now is the time, you guys, because honestly, from now until May, May 13th, it's it's kind of a free-for-all. It's probably going to be a shit show. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of shooting from the hip, uh, a lot of unorthodox a lot of shows, a lot of just kind of stuff thrown at it. Because um, we just want to have fun this last bit. Yeah, and that's why we, we didn't want to just end it to end it. Like We wanted to give it a farewell to her. Like, right. We want to give you guys time to do whatever you want to do, but you know, it's just all good things must come to an end and we Absolutely. feel like it's time. So, yeah. um, Chris, we thank you for being sorry. We didn't want to bring the heavy news. No, but. no, it's all right, man. You guys, I remember the first time I met you guys, like I had listened to you guys prior to meeting you. Uh-huh. And so I was like, Hey, you, know, you guys are hardly heroes. You're like, Oh, you should listen to our podcast. Like, I do listen. to <laughs> <laughs> It was like, you guys like, the shows you guys put out is it like, I'm not going to lie. Like I, I'll be on like, you know, driving somewhere and huh. I'll just put you guys on and just kind of listen to you guys just going back and forth and, uh, you know, kind of just stories and stuff like that. Cause like me, I've, 
I don't know if it's just my age getting older and stuff like that, but like when I drive places and I'm by myself, uh-huh. I find myself like sometimes I'll listen to music and then sometimes I'll just go on a podcast and right. I'll just like listen to podcasts and stuff like that. So it's like you guys are awesome. Thank you for all you guys have done. Thank you. You know, and this come, this goes out to everyone listening who was a part of the show in the past and stuff like that. And for all the people that I've gotten to meet and everything, you guys, you know, thank you guys for everything you guys have done. And, you know, thank you for giving me the chance to come on the show and Always. talk about what I do Always. and stuff like that. Yeah. And, you know, it's for indie filmmakers, when it comes to like having a, a, a outlet that will let you kind of express yourself and talk about it, it's very, very rare right. in this world now, especially now when it comes to like Warner Brothers and big Mm-hmm. controlling right, right. streaming on demand everything it's like back in the day no one gave a crap about on demand so indie filmmakers can do that because everybody was obsessed with theaters mm-hmm. now everything's switching because of 2020 and it's like we're kind of a dying breed right you know what i mean everything's going back to the early 90s where p- camera gear was out of our out of our reach and we right. couldn't afford to do anything mm-hmm. now it's just we don't have a place to put our stuff right so like i appreciate everything you guys do and stuff like that like you help keep little people like me alive Oh, we are, well, we appreciate <laughs> and now what he's you like, do. And now you're leaving. No, you no, know? it's okay. I mean, no, no, I. It's like this right now is is you know for you like you guys said going out on a high note. I've seen so many people like go and right. crash. Just take so, a yeah, nose so dive. You, yeah, so you guys, I mean, you guys are going out on a high note, and like I said, there's always a back, always an open door yeah. if you guys want to come back later. And if you guys want, I'm completely down to doing one last film with you guys oh my yes. god yes. <laughs> if, if you can get and this is a call out to all the ogs and everybody from harley heroes manny sprinkled everybody if you guys are down to do one last short film with everybody in it for the harley heroes i'm down to film it oh my god can yes. we do if, so yeah i don't know if i can get those guys but if i could like all the hosts yeah i'd want to do almost like the avengers where they're all like in a circle oh, right. and everybody's just kind of <laughs> yeah. like that would, that would be, be dope. legit Who, whoever i'm completely down i'm down for it oh my god so you gotta call so hgc yeah <laughs> uh, it's just no and i appreciate you saying that it's just I remember meeting you for the first time and watching your films and I was in awe. I'm like, dude, I can't believe he did that. You know what I mean? And that's what this show had kind of like opened up. I got to meet, you know, you and a lot of stars that I never thought I would meet. Like, you know, we had a lot of people for our 200th episode, like send us videos of like congratulations and stuff. But I like, sometimes I catch myself of like, I got to meet, you know, like well, it's kind of funny if you just put like, yourself in this situation where you're like, "Hey, I do a podcast," which it could be just like nothing really, and you're, but you can just like almost get yourself around and like yeah. introduce and mm-hmm. meet people where it's like you're in this world and you're like, "Well, I'm kind of doing something. I'm trying to contribute to this, mm-hmm. you know, to this world, to this nerdy kind of community." And people, you know, people are just like, "Oh, okay, cool." So you just get to meet so many cool people that if you're just kind of show up at these places and you're just like a fan, you're kind of on the outs. But if you just kind of like, you know, come in yeah. as mm-hmm. this person, you get to meet all these type of like really, really cool people. It's like people you just never would have met. Yeah. So well, I, I got think- to like interview Lou Ferrigno. Like mm. I, I would get to say that for the rest of my life. And same <laughs> with like Mindy Sterling, like oh, Sterling, Sterling. Hashtag. Yeah. I got to meet those people and interview them. Like they, you know, like, that blows my mind. That and all the Power Rangers. It's just, yeah. And I think that is the thing with Harley Heroes is it's absolutely been amazing and opened a lot of doors. And there's so many things we've been able to do. But, you know, it's, yeah, it's just kind of like. Yeah. And, you know, it was fun. And I enjoyed every minute of it and always had a blast. And I appreciate everybody that's listened, anybody that has supported the show and like you helping us make those movies and the patrons that we've had. I know the people who have given us money, especially it's like every month, these guys are just giving us a few bucks. Amazing. And then, you know, uh, to project wish upon a star, anybody that's helped us donate to them, like it means the world to them and we won't stop, but you know, I would do anything for them and trying to support them means the world to me. So that's our big news. Cool. Um, shoot well, your shot, dude. If you're trying to be on it or you wanted to do it, like now's the time. Let's and have some fun. I'm way more open with my schedule. If more people want to do some stuff, like not just a Thursday episode leading up to it. Cause I want to give anybody that wanted a shot, like 
I'll open up my schedule more than just a Thursday. Let's just put out as much stuff as we possibly can before, mm-hmm. you know, we're done. Chris, anything else you want to? Uh, yeah. Violet Film Festival is going to be on TV. Yes. What? So you guys can check that out. I haven't really announced anything or said anything yet, but it's going to be uh, on demand, public access, a few apps and stuff like that in, oh, cool. in May. So you'll get, can you yeah. get us that information? Yeah, I'll get you all the information. Cool. We're, 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 we're switching on the same Yeah, we're switching to TV and it's a completely free event. No, no subscriptions. As long as you have the apps or you have Comcast and digital okay. and stuff like that. And you right. live, no you way. live in the central Valley. So I want to say it's from like Redwood city to like Bakersfield area. Okay. Okay. Uh, and then the apps are more international or if you live out of the area, you guys can check it out, but we're having, Norway. Uh, yeah, we're having films uh, from all over the world showing. Very cool. Dude, and stuff like that. Yes. Love it. Yeah. We're actually filming the segments with the host and everything next Thursday. Very cool. Sweet. Yeah. So it's going to be like the, you know, the, you know, those award shows where there's yeah. no audience, but there's right. a stage and people, yeah. it's going to be like yeah. that cool. yes. show films oh. and stuff like that. So That's I'm excited for that. Oh. So yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll let you guys know about that. And other okay, than that, cool. keep an eye out for all the stuff. Yeah, so, dude, yeah. make sure you guys follow him on Facebook. Instagram? I don't have an Instagram, mm. but I have a YouTube channel, and okay. the link is on my Facebook. I also have a website, uh, Violet, V-I-O-L-E-T-T-E, films.com, okay. and then all of my links are on there. Yeah, Thank you we'll for spelling that. it, because I always feel like people struggle with it, so I always yeah, like, it's, want it's, you to spell for, it. For anybody who's in France, it's Violet, so it's mm. Violet Films, but oh, we okay. just say Violet because yeah. it was... My, easier. It, it's, e- it's easier and then plus violet means little violet and oh, so nice. it's like well, yeah, okay you know what i mean so well, yeah we'll, t- we'll put all that up too so people can yeah. make sure to find but you. make okay. sure you guys follow him yeah and it's good dude, stuff he's Great doing films. some really cool things i appreciate it thank you guys yeah. all righty uh, all right um well if you want to find us we're on all the socials Hardly yeah. Heroes. Yeah, you can find <laughs> us everywhere at Hardly Heroes. We love you guys so much. Sorry to drop the bomb, but yeah. we love you. Yeah, I mean, you know, just remember one thing. Disclaimer, they don't know bleep. <laughs>